Hi guys, it is Onyx and I am so excited and so grateful to finally be back with another coffee break. But you guys know the drill, nothing has changed. I'm going to start with a very funny and hilarious coffee joke. So are you ready? <clears throat> so guys, I love this joke, all right? Just, it's just so fitting for where I am in life. But anyway, how does Moses make his coffee? He brews it. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Break. <laughs> it's how your day get a little bit of coffee never hurt nobody. Take a sip, we're reaching for the stars. Happy days, this is where we start. And get back for a moment, relax, stay a while. Tune in for a second, we are sure to make you smile. We are filling up your cup, so please stick around. Here's a little morning inspiration. Before you go, just take a sip. Sip, sip before you go. Just take a sip, sip, sip before you go. Just take a sip, sip, sip before you go. Just take a sip, sip, sip before you go. You know I gotta show you today's coffee mug. I love coffee mugs. I collect coffee mugs. Everybody gives me coffee mugs because they know I'm obsessed, but this one, you see it? It says, Jesus and coffee. <laughs> I love it. This, uh, my son gave me this one and it's perfect. <laughs> um, but today's topic, today's title is Cancer, COVID, and Christ. And I promise guys, it is all connected. So the last time that I did a coffee break was when I spoke about my very new breast cancer diagnosis, um, which in some respects seems like so long ago. Um, and then in other respects, it feels like it just happened, you know? Um, but that's the last time I was really um, able to do a coffee break, able to really, um, keep up with my YouTube and a lot of my social media platforms. Um, but, uh, cancer came <laughs> and it's, I'm not going to say it knocked the wind out of me because Thank you, God, I am still here. But it definitely um, made me sit down. Um, and so, you know, my last coffee break was all about, you know, the diagnosis. And I had just lost my dad. For those of you who don't know, my dad was diagnosed and he passed away from lung cancer the day before my surgery, my uh, breast cancer surgery. Um, and I believe when I did my last video, he was, um, he was still alive, but he was, you know, uh, really not doing well. And, um, that was hard for me. I don't even know if I talked about it. Um, so it was very hard for me to be diagnosed with breast cancer while my dad was dying from cancer and there was this moment and I'm gonna just try not to be emotional but y'all know I'm emotional um I was really struggling with you know do I tell my dad because I knew that you know he wasn't going to beat his cancer you know and I didn't want to um not tell him because he's my dad you know but i also didn't want to add any kind of stress you know to him uh but my mom was you know really encouraging for me to talk to my dad and i remember telling him like 
you know, daddy, I have breast cancer and I have to go through chemotherapy and he had just had such sadness in his eyes, you know? And he just said, it's okay. We're gonna make it. And I remember in that moment, even though he said, we're gonna make it, he knew and I knew that he wasn't gonna make it, you know? Um, But I knew that, you know, I had to fight. And so that's what I did. Um, I had surgery. I did 20 weeks of chemo. I shaved my head. Um, I did nine weeks of radiation, and now I'm on hormone therapy. So even though the cancer is gone, I'm still um, in treatment for five years. Um, because I got cancer at um, a young age, or younger than it would typically come, there's all these preventative methods and medicines that they have me on so that it doesn't come back. Um, and one thing that I want to say <laughs> is that uh, survivorship is, to me, harder than fighting. Like when I was going through it, guys, if, if any of you follow me on social media, <laughs> then you know throughout my entire journey, I would not sit on that doctor's examination table because I felt like, that was me taking my power back. Like, I'm like, I'm not sitting on the table. I don't want to feel sick, you know? I'm gonna sit in this chair and we're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna talk about my treatment plan. We're going to, um, you know, talk about how this medication is making me feel. And I did not sit on that table until my very last visit when they said, it's time to ring the bell. I fought, you know, through the whole time and um, I didn't expect to live with the fear of it coming back, um, my body changing, my thought process changing, you know, um, when you are facing a situation that, uh, you know, uh, you could die from, um, it really changes your thought process. And I wasn't prepared for that part of the journey, but I'm navigating and it's been almost two years, guys. It's almost two years from my last chemo treatment and I'm a proud survivor. And I'm also an honest survivor. <laughs> so um, when I say that, I mean, I'm honest about still having struggles. I'm honest about um, how difficult it is sometimes, you know? Um, I really love to talk to women, like, guys, get a mammogram. I know it's scary, <laughs> you know? Um, know your body, do your self checks. Like, black women die from breast cancer so much more than white women. And it doesn't have to be that way. So it's so important, guys, that you stay on top of your health. And this is, this is something that is new to me in regards to really being an advocate about healthy living, about going to the doctor, about making sure that you are in tune with your body. You know, I have had to make tremendous lifestyle changes. I'm still in the process of making lifestyle changes, um, but I just realized how important it is to 
be healthy and to do what you can do to keep this machine going, you know? Um, so I am cancer free, yay, yay, yay. And uh, I thank God for the journey, even though it was horrible at times, even though it was scary, even though um, at times I didn't understand why. Now I understand that it was such a part of my journey and I have such a testimony and I'm so grateful for it. So no matter what your storm is, you know, my storm was cancer. I mean, I had a lot of other storms, <laughs> you know, but this particular storm was cancer. Um, no matter what your storm is, just know that you can absolutely get through it. And a lot of times when you get through it, when you get those bumps and bruises, when you um, allow yourself to be afraid, when, uh, be afraid, when you allow yourself to be afraid, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable and be um, unsure and to be open to the experience, even if it feels horrible. When you allow that, uh, oftentimes you find that you'll be able to see the purpose and the lesson after the storm has cleared. And so I know it sounds crazy, but I'm really grateful for my cancer journey because the woman I am today after it, because of it, going through that I love. I am so different than the Onyx from three years ago. I'm so different. I'm a different Keisha, okay? You guys hear me? I am a different Keisha. And um, man, I wouldn't be here unless I went through that storm. So I am just grateful. So cancer, then COVID. Let me tell you how crazy. <laughs> life is it's like god sat me down i went through my cancer journey i worked guys i the arts truly heal let me tell you every phase of my cancer journey i did theater because theater is my spiritual connection um with god it's my connection with other people the arts it, it, it's it's a uh, it's always been a form of, of of spiritual expression for me. It's been what it's the only thing that I know, or it's the thing I know most. You know, I have been acting, producing, directing the majority of my life. I don't even remember before. I did any of that, you know? Um, I was in high school, you know? And I'm way past high school, even though I'm not gonna tell you. I'm way past high school, you know? So, you know, it's really all I know. And so when I was thinking about what do I need, it was the art. So when I first uh, got diagnosed and had to go through my surgery, my surgeries, I, was doing, uh, I was directing and producing for colored girls who have considered suicide um, in Atlanta at Synchronicity Theater with amazing actors who helped me to get through that moment. When I went through my 20 weeks of chemo, I was starring as Ruth Younger in the play A Raisin in the Sun in New Jersey. And guys, I would, go to chemo on a Tuesday. I would fly to New Jersey because you guys know I live in Atlanta, New Jersey. I would do my chemo treatment in Georgia, get on a plane, go to New Jersey. I would allow myself to feel the um, side effects of the chemo. It usually took me about a day or two to be able to really function. And I would then go to rehearsal for the play. 
ball head and all immunocompromised i would go and i would rehearse and then i would get back on a plane i would fly back to georgia i would have a day to rest and then i would go back to chemo and then after i finished my 20 weeks of chemo i went on this beautiful seven day cruise to alaska it was amazing um, with my bestie after that, I started radiation and um, I produced and directed one of my favorite plays, A Little Shop of Horror. The little, A Little Shop of Horror, is that it? Is that how you say it? <laughs> um, little Shop of Horror. So, you know, with the plant, the plant, you know. So during radiation, that's what I did. Um, you know, I directed that play. I also did a couple other plays in between, but the point is, I still was working. The arts healed, the arts helped to heal me. So get through all that, right? Radiation is done. Like my hair is starting to grow back, you know, it was looking a little George Jefferson-ish. I wasn't sure if the top was gonna grow in, but it was all coming together. And I had this, um, it was like opening night for my play, right? And I had a bunch of people come into town, fly in to see the play. Um, and I also had a bell ringing ceremony where I just had everybody who was really close to me. We went for a dinner and I had my bell, you know, because I didn't want to ring the bell at the doctor's office. I wanted to, um, you know, have a celebration. So had dinner, rang the bell. I'm thinking about life like, yes, what, are, what am I going to do now? I beat cancer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Bam. COVID happened. Now, I know COVID was pretty devastating for the world, you know, and I am not saying by any means that my journey, um, that my journey is any uh, more traumatic than anybody else's. All I'm saying is cancer, COVID. It was like a no break, no, um, no, like a breathing room, uh, but COVID came and I was terrified. I uh, was obsessed with CNN. I um, was really scared, you know. Uh, I was worried about my own health. I was worried about the health of people around me. I was uh, very just worried for us as a nation, as a world. I was just really shaking. COVID really, it shook me. Uh, I was already feeling uneasy, you know, or trying to regain my footing and then bam. But what COVID did is it gave me the opportunity to really sit back and assess my life. I had gone through, you know, the trauma of losing my dad, the trauma of cancer. Um, and, and if you follow me, you know that I was just rebuilding my life <laughs> because prior to that, you know, my entire life just like, um, went into like chaos, you know, I was in a relationship that ended pretty bad. You know, I had a beautiful home and I, you know, lost my home. I lost my car. I was lose. I felt like I was losing my business. Like I was rebuilding my life when cancer hit. And I was so happy because like my career was starting to take off um, in a different direction. You know, I was doing stuff uh, on Broadway. I was producing at a rapid rate and I was acting, you know, and so I was rebuilding my life. So bam, cancer, then COVID. And now I'm like, what is it? What is it that I'm missing? 
Um, what is it that I can get some clarity about? You know, so for me, COVID really helped me to gain clarity on my calling, on my business endeavors, on the importance of family and connection. You know, I was so career driven that I truly neglected my family, you know? Um, and it's something like I used to struggle with mommy guilt a lot. Like, whoo, you know, mommypreneurs out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but COVID gave me a chance to be with my babies. Now they're not babies, okay? They're teenagers, I have two teenagers. But to be with them 24 seven, to laugh with them, to cry with them, to uh, reconnect, to be their mom. To be their mom without also having to, you know, run the business at full capacity, to film and produce, um, it allowed me to reset my family, you know? It allowed me to reconnect and reevaluate. You know, what is really important to me, um, what success looked like to me, which has changed tremendously. Um, so, you know, COVID really allowed me to reconnect with my beautiful babies and to reconnect with myself. And most importantly, which brings us to the Christ, cancer, COVID, Christ. It allowed me to reconnect with God. Guys, let me tell you. I never would have thought that spirituality would become the center of everything that I do. Um, I directed a play called Black Nativity um, two, three years ago, maybe two years ago. I think it was right, it was right before my cancer diagnosis. I knew that um, I had cancer, but I did not tell anybody, right? And so Black Nativity is a Christmas play, but it's very rooted in Christianity. It is... Um, a gospel play, you know, and I remember we sold that we sold out all performances of Black Nativity, and it was a spiritual experience, guys. It was beautiful, the dancing, the singing. It's it's one of the plays that I'm most proud of. But I remember in my closing, my thank you, you know, where I get on stage and I thank everybody. I was able to talk about God, and I was able to do it because it was a, a gospel play. So I felt really comfortable doing it. And I talked about how good God is. And I talked about, um, you know, my love of God and my spiritual journey. And I remember saying on that stage that this is what I want to always do. I don't, I no longer want to feel like I cannot rep Jesus. <laughs> or I cannot rep my love for God in the spaces that I was in. You know, when I work with schools, you know, you can't talk about God. A lot of times when I do work within within the um, LGBT plus community, there's a lot of trauma around church. So it was always difficult to um, incorporate my spirituality into my work. And in that moment, I realized there can no longer be a separation. I can no longer be a part of me separate. It was me separating God from my art. I couldn't do that. Um, so fast forward, 
you know, through everything. And I realized um, that Christ is a big part of what I do. <laughs> you know, it's a big part of why I do what I do. Um, I realize that I can no longer separate my spiritual walk from my uh, creative endeavors. Um, and, you know, I went through this this season where I was not sure. I'm like, can I, can I, you know, love God and make movies and make the type of movies that I make? Like, it was like crazy. Uh, but that's when I got really still and I just listened and I prayed and uh, I realized that God is a part of everything. Like we're the ones that take God out. You know, God is there when you're cursing your neighbor out. God is there when you're making love. God is there when, you know, you're getting frustrated and you have road rage. God is there, you know, and God is there when you praise. God is there in the, in the beautiful moments. God, God is there always. And so I really want to embody that in a sense that there, there's no shame. There's no hiding. There's no... Uh, a separation. And so I started this movement called Faith It. Um, I, I, I wrote a book um, and it's called uh, Faith It. <laughs> um, and it really is a kickstart to my movement. And my whole thing is like, it's okay to fear it, whatever it is. It's okay to fear it, but you must face it and then faith it. Faith it, faith it, faith it, faith it, and you are going to get through it. And so I went to school um, for uh, religious studies and I got ordained and I, um, you know, started my faith it movement and I filmed so much during COVID, guys. I, I thank God, you know, I would be in the middle of filming and be like, oh, guys, like it, it's a pandemic and we are here filming and I would be freaking out. And my business partner would always be like, God got us. God got us. And she was right. <laughs> you know, we filmed so many, almost a dozen projects during COVID. Um, of course, everybody was always safe testing, masks, social distancing, um, all of that stuff. But, you know, I, I made some, some really great movies and shows and, and uh, shorts during COVID. And I um, did not once feel like I needed to separate or hide my spiritual journey and my faith walk. Um, and no, they're not Christian films. <laughs> they're films about life because I think it's very important to understand that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and that human experience is what we are designed to have. So we have to embrace it. We have to acknowledge it. We have to make sure that we don't ignore it. You know, I'm in a lot of different types of spiritual circles. And sometimes I feel like, hey, guys, we're missing the point. Like we're missing the point of having the human experience because we are so busy trying to escape the human experience. But the human experience is beautiful. And when you are spiritually enlightened, it just makes it all the more beautiful. Um, well, at least in my opinion, okay? <laughs> um, another thing that was very interesting is that it was very hard for me to even, it still is hard for me to even talk about my spiritual journey because I feel like um, the perception of me is going to change. Um, I feel like the way that people look at me and work with me and speak with me and all of that stuff is going to change. So it was really hard for me. It still is really hard for me some, 
And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I I was afraid and sometimes I'm still afraid to uh, really, what I say, come out as a Christian. <laughs> I mean, I'm so tickled by that because it's true. Like, I was like, man, this is hard. Um, so uh, I, I, I really had to deal with why that was. And let me also say this, uh, because I, I know that Christianity can't, gets a bad rap, you know, um, Rightfully so, you know, I feel like a lot of times church and um, religious organizations and uh, certain people have really uh, presented the hypocrisy that a lot of uh, Christians have. That's just the reality, you know, um, and I'm aware of that, you know, um, and I'm also aware of the beautiful spiritual journeys that people that I love and I'm close to are going through that are not mine. And I love and respect that as well. You know, I am definitely, so this is what I say, guys. I say, I drink the Jesus juice and Jesus makes me feel good. My faith expression is rooted in Christianity. However, I understand that my faith walk is not everybody's faith walk. So whether your faith walk is rooted in African spirituality or it's rooted in Buddhism or it's rooted in sage and crystals, you know, none of that matters to me because we serve one God and whether you call that God, God or the universe or the divine or whatever, there's no separation. We are all connected. And so that's really how I govern myself. You know, I am definitely not like, oh, you don't believe what I believe. So, you know, you're less than no, like, let's come together. Um, Let's truly show the world the beauty of God and connection and oneness, you know? Like, let's connect. Let's stop looking at what separates us and make us, makes us different. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that is... That's my my life update on this coffee break. Cancer, COVID, Christ. Now, I don't want you up here judging me if you hear me saying some bad words or you see one of my movies and you're like, hmm, I thought she was into this new spiritual thing. Listen, I am very clear. I'm very, 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 very clear that I am going to continue to be all of me and bring all of me to everywhere that I go. So that's all sides of me. I mean, I don't really, really curse. You know, if you know me, that's not really my thing. But I'm just saying, if I have a couple of words in my mouth, so what? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean I'm less uh spiritual or whatever you guys know that's just an example um just don't come for me that's all i'm saying don't come for me um let's see do i have any like really big life updates oh i do i do i do so you know before when i was saying man my career was taking off i had no idea what god had in store because now I am, I am truly living my dreams and getting paid for doing what I love. You know, um, throughout the pandemic, business has been great. 
I have also, you know, been producing for, you know, some pretty major shows that some of you guys might know and see on a TV One or Oxygen. And I am just in awe of everything. Like cancer, COVID, Christ opened up my entire world. It set me on this path of just self-love, success, happiness, peace, joy, you know, um, man, out of the storms, beautiful flowers really do grow. So until next time, guys, please remember it's okay to fear it, but you got to face it and then go ahead and face it. My name is Onyx. This is the first coffee break in like three years. And I am so excited for many, many more. Bye, guys.